Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we are going to do a solo playthrough of Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria. I've never played any of the other Valeria games. This is the first one that I am playing and I have to say I am definitely enjoying it. In this game, it is a dice drafter, so you're going to be drafting dice from these five different layers. You're then going to be completing battle objective cards while competing against a, a fellow champion, so to speak, in the solo game, trying to score more points than they are. I am going to be the orcs, so I'm the red player, and we're going to go against the gargoyles, and they start at 10 victory points. We're going to go until one of us uh, collects seven battle plans that we've completed, and then the other player will get one more turn after that we'll count up points if i have more points than the gargoyles i win the game also has one expansion shadow kingdoms of valeria rise of titans i'm not playing with any of the modules they're modules that you can mix and match and add into the base game i do feel like most of them are for the player only it makes it slightly easier so we're just going to play a base game only i do want to mention turn on those klingon subtitles if in case i make any mistakes and i miss it in editing you'll see it there and of course don't watch this for any sort of strategy <laughs> I'm going to be showing you how to play and likely will make some pretty poor choices, but that's okay. I can still show you how the game works. So without further ado, let's jump in to setup and then we can take down those pesky heroes and try and score more points than a fellow champion. Let's start with setup. The first part of setup is shuffling your battle plan cards and placing one out on each of these spots. One of the main ways you score points in this game is by choosing these and completing these battle plans, sending some skeletons and some gnolls out to ambush the Watcher of the Water, <laughs> stuff like that. So you're trying to complete these, but there's lots of other ways to score points as you'll see as we play. When you're playing solo in the gems layer, place three gems we can potentially collect. The AI that you're going against will also start in this area. They're going to be moving clockwise around the board. They start in the gems layer. For a solo game, you'll grab five dice of each troop type. We have orcs, we have gnolls, we have gargoyles, we have goblins, and we have skeletons. I believe I have those right. We're going to grab five of each of those, put it into our awesome handy dandy little bag, and then in each of these layers, we're going to randomly draw two of them and roll two of them into each layer. When we go into those layers, then we will draft a die and then do the action of that layer. We've seeded our layers with two dice each. We'll be going through here and collecting these dice. Once there's only three dice left on the board, we'll then take those three dice off and replenish each of these layers with two dice each. It's important to note that if any layer has no dice, we literally cannot go there until we have put more dice there. Next, we have our champions board. Over here, we have three different types of champions. These are the one-time use champions. You'll get a benefit from them one time, and then they'll just sit out by your player board. These ones have an ability that every time something happens, you get a benefit. And then these are end game scoring ones. So they're a little more expensive. They cost six plus gold. So what we're going to do is set out three in each of these. We'll talk through some of these as we play. Just know that there's no bad ones out here. They're all great. They all give you either one-time benefits or some cool ability or just some other way to score points at the end of the game. We also have three award cards up here. Now, when you're playing competitively, you're racing other players to try and complete these first, right? If I completed this first, I get seven points. The person next would get five. When you're playing solo, you're just trying to complete as many of these as possible. The most you can do, of course, is one of each of these. If you do that, then at the end of the game, the AI will only score five points for each one of these award cards you have a disc on. If you have no disc on it, then the AI will score seven points. The three award cards we randomly chose this time, this one, we can claim this if we are able to complete battle plans that have an arrow, uh, the axe, and the siege. And you can see those battle plan cards have that symbol in the bottom right corner. This is all about your campaign board, which we'll talk about in a minute. But if we can cover up the specific spots, you can see black spots here. If we cover those up on our campaign board, we can then try and claim this. And then finally for this one, if we complete six battle cards, battle plan cards, uh, we can claim that one. And remember, if we claim seven, that'll actually end the game. So 
likely we should be able to get this one. I'm hoping to get all three if we can. Here we have our orcs player board. On the player board, we have 10 of these conquest markers. Every time we complete a battle plan, we can remove one of these and put them onto our campaign board. Also, whenever we go and claim one of those award cards, we'll remove one of these uh, as well. So potentially, we can get rid of seven plus three. We can actually get rid of all 10 <laughs> if we can do all of it. I haven't really done that. I don't think I've done that ever. Uh, we have our warden here, which is what we're going to use and place in the different layers to act Activate those different locations and draft dice. We can place our draft dice here. There are three resources, well, kind of two resources in the game and an influence. Your influence starts at 10. Influence is very important. Uh, whenever you do your battles, you can never score more uh, of a value for your battle than your influence. So if I had a battle value of 20, but my influence is only 10, well, then the highest value I can get is 10. So your influence, you're going to want to pump up as much as you can. But you can see one of these conquest markers are in the way. So you're going to have to be able to remove that to keep going all the way up to 20. You have gold that you can use to buy cards or buy champions. And then you have magic that you can use either to cycle some of those battle plan cards, cycle the champions, or increase the value of one of your dice during a battle when you're trying to complete a battle plan card. Uh, you can increase it by one and you can do that multiple times. Magic is super helpful. I love magic. You can store at the beginning of the game one gem. A gem can be used to turn any die to any color or to flip a die from one side to the other, which is kind of cool. Finally, we'll put our completed battle plans over here. Ones that we are looking at completing but haven't completed yet, we can put here and unlock these two so we can potentially have three that we're working on at the same time. Over here is where we'll put those champions. The max we can have is three at first, but then we can increase it to six or to 10 if we take those off. And then of course we have our random campaign board. Now each one of these is double sided. There's a bunch of them in there. You can choose which side. I am choosing this side because I want to. <laughs> Every time we complete one of those battle plans, we can put this out in one of these spots, claiming the benefit that's there if it's uh, uh, relevant. So if we did a battle plan that used arrows, when we put this here, we would score two additional points. The other fun part is we can chain. So if let's say we um, put one here and here, the moment we put this one here, we'd claim this benefit, one victory point per null die we needed to use on that battle plan card. Plus, because this is now chained, we'd gain three gold. Kind of cool. I love how this works. And each side is a little bit unique. It's just unique in a way of how the different uh, things are set up. Basically, they're the same ones. They're just set in different ways. Uh, and this is a way that you can increase influence. And like I said, influence is very, very important in this game. It's the only way you're going to pump up and make your battles worth more. With all that set up out of the way, we can jump right into our playthrough. Now, we will start as the first player. We get to choose any of these five layers or if we have a battle plan that we want to complete, either that's reserved, or even if it's over here, we don't have to reserve a battle plan to complete it. We just have to be able to pay the cost then of the card and complete it. And there's a benefit for reserving a, 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 a battle plan, which I'll show you in a second. Right now, this gargoyle is blocking this layer. I cannot go to the gem layer. And whatever layer he is in, he will block. Also, if I go to the layer in front of him, because what he's going to do after I take my turn is just simply move around the board. He's just going to go clockwise around like this. And every time he gets to this space, he's going to complete the topmost battle plan card. And the game ends after seven are completed. So he's kind of a timer. He's also going to score points doing that. So if I go here, which I can, then he will move into here and score immediately two points. So essentially, he de-incentivizes the layer in front of him, and he completely blocks the layer that he's in. So because of that, I think I might start off, yeah, you know, I think I'm going to start off here. So I'm going to start off in this layer. This is the champion shrine and where we can purchase one of the champions that's on the board on the right hand side. However, first we get to choose one of these two dice and we'll draft it and place it onto our player board. Now these dice have a lot of different symbols on them. The one on the top, the big main one, that's used whenever you're doing battles. But there's also a number here in the far left corner and you can see there's a five. What that means is if I buy this uh, or I choose to draft this die right now, I have a five coin discount on obtaining one of the champions on the right. Conversely, if I chose this four here, it'd be better in battle, but then I only get a two coin discount. 
I have a plan, so I think I'm going to grab this one. Also, I should say the ones on the right-hand side tell you what type of troop it is. So these are skeletons. So I'm getting a pretty weak skeleton, but with that skeleton, I will have a discount of five. I'll place that die up here on my player board. I can only store three here. If I have to draft another die and I haven't used those three, I'll discard one into the bag and place the one I newly drafted on here. With that five cost discount, I can buy one of these champions here for free because it only costs three. Now you see how it says three plus? What that means is, let's say I had bought this engineer in a previous round, and then I went and I wanted to buy this satyr. If I tried to buy this, it would cost three plus the amount of the champions that are of the same type that I already have. So it actually cost us four to get that satyr. I would love to get one of these ones, they're cool, but at the beginning of the game, I love getting these instants, and pushing up our influence is the best way to score more points. So I'm gonna grab this elite guard, that's going to instantly give us two influence. And then I'll flip over a new one. Oh, we have another elite guard. I've placed my elite guard here, and I can immediately move up my influence by two. That means that if I have a battle plan and I complete it with dice, and I can get to 12 or 13 or 14, the highest I can get is 12 now instead of only 10, which is kind of nice. The best part about this game is just how fast the AI's turns are because that gargoyle will move there and that's it. And because of that, then I'm going to activate next. Now, I cannot choose the layer that I'm in right now. So the choices that I have are these three layers right here. I can also go back to my own camp to actually complete one of those battle plants. I'm not ready for that yet. I only have one die. So I'm going to come over here to the gem uh, layer. When going to the gem layer, I'll draft this six orc die. I like that. And I can grab one of these gems. Remember that these gems allow us to either flip a die from one side to the other. So I could flip this one to a six which is kind of appealing, or I can change a die color. I won't actually switch out the die, I'll just use the die and assume it's any color that I'd like. And that's what I can do with the gem. The gargoyle will then move over to the champion's lair. And I think then I'll simply move to the magic shrine, collecting this six die. That's my third one, I can't hold any more. At this shrine, you can do one of two things. You can either gain two magic, or if you have one of those awards completed, you can place one of your conquest markers there. I definitely don't have any of those completed, so I'll just gain the two magic. Remember that magic can help you during battles, or if you're buying cards, you can use it to recycle some and flip new ones out. So now I have five magic. Our gargoyle will now move to the gold shrine, and now it's back to us, and I think I'm going to try and complete one of the battle plans. I don't love doing this. I'd prefer to go here and collect it, but I didn't have great dice choices. And honestly, I probably didn't make great choices. <laughs> uh, that sounds like an orcish thing to do, right? So what we're going to do, we will place our warden here. Now we have no battle plans in reserve, so we have to immediately buy one. There's one that I want, one, two, three, four, for four gold. We're going to grab this Overwhelm Teepee's Ridge Fortress. So we're going to grab that one, Slide this down and flip over the next one. It is Assail uh, Karloff Castle. What we need to do now is assign dice that match this type. So we need to have two skeletons and our battle strength is all going to be dependent upon the dice we use. Well, we have this wimpy skeleton for one. <laughs> and then I'm going to use this goblin here for six to make that seven. And we'll use this gem to make that a wild so it matches the color type. So that means we have two of these skeletons here for only a total of seven. Well, I don't want that. I want 11. So I'm going to use my magic, um, eight, uh, eight, nine, 10, 11, going down to here, increasing this up by four to five. So our total battle strength is 11. We'll then compare that to our influence. Our influence is 12, so that's acceptable. We'll take the lower of the two, so we will take our battle value of 11. If my battle plan had, had been, let's say, 13, or battle value, I could only take 12. We can then look at this chart and see how many victory points we'll gain for a battle strength of 11. And you can see 11 to 13 is 6. That's why I really wanted 11 and not 10, because it's only 3. We'll go from zero to six. We'll then grab these two dice and throw them back into the bag and place this over here in our completed battle plan location. We'll also put this back on the board that we can collect later. And then we can choose any of these conquest markers and remove them. And removing the dice one is appealing and based on, 
Yeah, based on what I'm seeing here, this way we can collect more dice, so I'm going to remove that. We then can choose where we get to place it on this board, and don't forget we're trying to do the plus symbol because that's one of the awards, uh, and we can complete that award. So I'm going to place it here, gaining two more victory points because we get a victory point per the uh, skeletons that were on the most com recently completed battle card. So we'll place that here, gaining two more points. This will mean we almost caught up to the AI, except... The Gargoyle Warden will move over here into the Tactics uh, layer and immediately complete this battle plan. And then score points equal to the amount of symbols on it. Since there's two symbols, they will score nine points. And we'll set it aside over here and we'll replenish that with this one. Ooh, we've got two orcs and a goblin. Nine plus ten is nineteen points. So yeah, I was close for a little bit, not so much anymore. It's now back to our turn, and I think I'm going to move back to the champion's lair, grabbing this four, and because I'm grabbing the four, I have a two-coin discount for purchasing one of the champions. We're going to grab the sentry this time. When we do that, we can immediately grab any of the battle plan cards and immediately reserve it. We don't have to pay its cost. So we'll grab him. That would normally cost one, but we already have one of these uh, instant effect champions. So it costs us plus one. That's two, but I had a two coin discount. So no worries there. We don't have to pay anything, which is good because I have a lot of coins. So I'll then flip over the next one. Ooh, a thief. I'm quite intrigued by the Bushwhack Zophar's Oasis. Let's Bushwhack. <laughs> I need some orcs and a goblin. I already have one orc and one goblin, so I don't have to pay the cost, which is nice. Oh, and we have the Ravage, the D Dark Harbor. I can only reserve one battle plan. I have this one reserved, and when I reserve one, I can spend a gold, which I'm definitely going to do, to increase my reputation by one. The overlords like that I have a plan. <laughs> so... I have given them a little gold, telling them I'm going to do this, and my influence has gone up to 13, but now I can't increase my influence till I get rid of this. Our gargoyle friend will move up to here. That means we are going to move to the gold lair. In the gold lair, I'll draft this skeleton die of one, and you can see here I gain gold equal to the discount value, that circle value. So that's going to gain me five gold. That's why I wanted to do that, even though it's a weak battle die. Five plus one is six gold. I like that. The gargoyle will now move over here to the magic lair, and we can go back to the crystal lair, grabbing a crystal and this four die. Then the gargoyle will move to the champion's lair. We can't even go to that lair because there's no dice there. There's four dice left. What that means is after we grab the next die, uh, when it's our next turn, we'll replenish all the locations with two dice. For this time, though, I think we're going to complete another battle plan. We need two orcs and a goblin. Well, we have an orc. We technically have a gargoyle, but why don't we change that over to an orc with our gem? And we have a goblin. <laughs> so six plus four is 10 plus four is 14. That's one more than our influence, so we can only use 13. 13 is the max right now at six points. So we just scored another six points and we're definitely going to remove this one so I can increase my influence over 13 uh, to be able to place that conquest marker. This will push us to 14 total points. Now I have a few options for placing this uh, conquest marker. I could place it here because I had one goblin on that battle plan. That's going to be one additional point, and that would be going in line with my, uh, what is that, the plus symbol that I'm going for. But if I go here, I'll score two more points because I had two orcs that I needed for this, and then I get the chain bonus of two more influence, but it's not in my star, or I should say my plus symbol. For whatever reason, I can't think of that symbol name, but I think I'm still going to do it. I'm going to do this, gain two more victory points and two more influence. We are no longer blocked at 14, so we can move to 15 influence. And two more points is nothing to scoff at. We're at 16 compared to the 19. The gargoyle will move here, and now it's back to us. We don't have a lot of options. We can't choose this one. If we choose either of these two, we'll give the gargoyle two points. But maybe that's worth it to be able to use one of these for the discount. However, the die that I already have is a one, which is pretty terrible. 
Of course, the best one here is a three. <laughs> so I don't have a lot of great options. What the heck? Let's go for the three. We'll grab this. I cannot complete any of the awards, so we'll just gain two magic. We'll place that die right here, and two more magic puts us up to three. The gargoyle will move here, completing the Ravage Dak Harbor, not Dark. And you can see there's three symbols on here that will score him 12 points. So he's at 19, 29, 30, 31. 31 points. Ow. And we'll replenish that with, oh, we just need some gargoyles. It's now our turn. We only have three dice. So I'll pick up those three dice and re-roll all of them back into the lair. We have the board refreshed. Let's go over here to the champion's lair and draft this four. So we have a two discount. We'll spend four of our six coins to go for one of the game end scoring champions. And then that will be our third champion. We can't get any more until we unlock this to get six or to ten. We're going to grab this Firebrand because at the end of the game, we'll score one point per battle plan we complete. I'm really hoping to at least get six, if not seven, done. So that's six or seven more points at the end of the game. Why the heck not? All right, we'll flip this next one over. This one gives us one point per uh, battle plan that has that symbol on it. And I should say every one of those symbols is worth a point up to a maximum of 10. So if I had, let's say, this card. This card will be worth two points for that if I had a completed battle plan card because it has two of the null symbols. Our gargoyle friend will then move to the gem space, which is, of course, where I wanted to go. <laughs> oh, bummer. I'm definitely not playing a perfect game, but that's just fine. That's how it works. I'm going to play or go into the tactics layer. And I'm going to grab this three. So this is a gargoyle three that gives me a three cost discount on purchasing one of these battle plans. I'll grab the strike the Colosseum. Won't have to pay anything for it. Dis, uh, moving all these other ones down. And we have infiltrate the Crystal Lake encampment at top. I'll place my three die right here. Place this right here. Spend one coin. I'm down to one, but that pushes up my influence to 16. Now at 16, I can get 12 points to uh, when I complete battle plans, so long as I get up to 16 for my numbers, which is quite doable, I think. Our gargoyle friend will continue his rounds, and we will slide into here, grabbing this gargoyle die, which is a six, and a gem for good measure. We'll place that gem right here. I'm going to take this six and discard this uh, goblin, who needs that goblin, and put it right here. The gargoyle will now move to the champion's space, and I think what we're going to do is complete one of our battle plans. To complete Strike the Colosseum, we needed a gargoyle and two skeleton uh, troops. We have all of that. I have 6, 10, 11. That's not enough. I'm going to use a gem, and I'm going to flip this to a 6. That means we have 6 plus 6 is 12, plus 4 is 16. That's exactly what we can get with our influence, and that's 12 points for completing that one. Heck yeah. And we can remove one of these. Oh, which one do I want to remove? You know, I kind of like removing this one because I get a gem right back. One time when you unlock this, now I can hold three. I also, an immediate effect, gain one gem. I was kind of thinking of one of these. Oh, you know, because I can't get any more of those champions. Oh, is that worth it? Maybe... You know what? I think this time I've got to go champion because I want to make sure that it's worthwhile going to that lair because I go to that lair and I can't get a champion. I don't want to go there. So I think I'm going to do this so I can have up to three more champions. And then my next one will be this one. I had a total combat value of 16, so I needed 15 plus to do this one. So why don't we gain two more points? So we had a total of what? 12 points plus two is 14 points. 16 plus 14 is 30. We're right behind the AI. Take that, Gargoyle. I know you're going to complete another battle plan, though, in just a second. <laughs> He's going to move himself right here. We still have one more turn before he does that. I think what I will do is actually go to the gem layer, grab this six null die, and grab one gem. He'll then move over to this spot, gaining another nine points, discarding this battle plan. He now has three battles completed, just like we do. <gasps> this is a four. He would get a total of 15 points if we have a four on top, so we cannot have that. Nine points will move him from 31 to 40. 
For our next move, I think we're going to slide right on over to the magic uh, layer here, grabbing this six, and we're going to do this, which allows us to complete one of the awards. We'll put that six right here. We'll grab this one, which will immediately give us another gem. So now we have two gems. Our three battle plans that we have completed is one of each of the different types. So we'll immediately score seven points, and that's also going to reduce the Gargoyles points to five for that card, which is worth it. We'll sneak up from 30 to 37. Our Gargoyle then will move to here, and it's back to us. Unfortunately, we're quite low on cash, so we're going to slide ourselves to the gold layer, grabbing this two, and that means we'll gain four total gold. We'll move from one to five gold. The Gargoyle will then move to the magic layer. Now, there's only four dice left. I can, I'll have to grab one more. After I grab one more, then <laughs> uh, they'll refresh, which is good because these look pretty terrible. I think, though, what I'm going to do is actually complete a battle plan. I'm going to spend two gold going from five to three to grab this one here that needs four dice. And that's going to slide our cards down. And we have a new one. Oh, this one still has three symbols. So he'll score 12 points when he completes that one. We need two gargoyle troops and two orc troops. Well, I'm going to use this gem to turn this into uh, an orc troop. So we have the two orc and two gargoyle. That's 6, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Well, the most we can do is 16. That's still a total of 12 victory points, which I love. The conquest marker that we're going to choose to remove is this one that makes any red die or any red die any color, which is great. I, however, am not doing great making my plus symbol because I think I'm going to go here. That will give us two more points yet again because I had two gargoyle symbols. So that's two more points and two more magic for that chaining. So I have three magic now. I'll move up to five magic. Eh, I've got to find one with some gnolls. When I put that in, I'll gain six gold, which would be sweet. With that 14 point gain, we'll go from 37 to 51. We are now in front of the AI, at least for a little bit. The gargoyle will then move to here. And now it's our choice, and I think without a doubt we're going to go here. I don't have six battle plans completed, so I'll just grab this orc die, which is wild, any color that we want. Awesome. And we'll gain two magic. Magic is where it's at. Our gargoyle friend will move yet again, and now we'll take these three dice off the board and replenish. With the board refreshed, why don't we move... Oh, wait. You know, I was thinking of moving here. But once the gargoyle moves here, it's going to be a lot harder to go there. So actually, I think I'm going to go here because I love gems. And I can go to this one next. So I'm going to grab another orc die and another gem. That will mean our gargoyle friend will just move here and complete his fourth battle card as well. This is another three symbol card, so another 12 points for him. And we'll replenish that with capture the ancient tomb he's currently at 40 that will put him at 52 sneaking right in front of us i think then i will go here now grabbing this other orc die it's another three <laughs> uh, but that means i get a three discount three discount on an elite guard why not normally that would cost one plus i already have two of those instant ones so it actually costs three that means i don't have to pay anything for him and I will flip this over. Oh, that one lets you grab any die on the board immediately. Two more influence, though, is pretty fantastic. If ever you get to the top of this and you keep gaining influence, you can't get higher than 20. You just gain two points for every influence you'd gain. The gargoyle will now move to the gem shrine. And what do we want to do? I keep going back and forth, but I think I'm going to go for a battle plan. And I'm going to grab this orc die for one, so I get a discount of five. I really like the look of this ancient tome one. Who doesn't, or tomb? <laughs> Who doesn't want to take over an ancient tomb? Okay. And we uh, refresh, refresh that with a blockade, the Martin Road. We'll place that battle plan here. That's our fourth die. And we'll spend another coin or gold to move up to 19. Yeah, I've got almost no gold, but it's still working out. The gargoyle will then move over here, and I think we're going to try and complete that battle plan. Remember that all of the orc dice are wild in color. So two of those will be gnolls, one will be a skeleton, and then I will use a gem to turn that to any color. And then I'm going to use a gem to flip this over to a six. So pretend that is a six skeleton. <laughs> so we have six, seven, eight, nine, 
plus another nine, that's 18. Uh, and then let's use one magic here. Well, no, eight, I think that's 18 versus 19 is no different. Yeah, that's 15 beautiful points. And we're definitely going to unlock this one so we can have a little more room for dice. We'll increase that 15 to a 17 by covering this up since there are two null symbols on that battle objective. And we just gained six gold plus the two that we have. That is eight gold. I feel so rich. We'll move from 51 to 61 plus seven is 68 points. Love it. Okay, this gargoyle will move here and now it's back to us. With the dice that are on the board, none of these battle plans look glorious. I mean, I have a lot of gargoyles out. I've got three gargoyles. I've got one skeleton, two gnolls, and a goblin. <laughs> that doesn't really match anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna draft this two die. That means I have a four cost discount. But what I'm going to do is instead of buying one of these, I'm going to pay a magic to take one of these and place it at the bottom of the deck and then replenish it with a new one. So that made my magic go from seven down to six. Okay, that's two skeletons and a knoll. Yeah, I don't, I don't love that. I'll pay another magic. So I'll go down to five to look at the next one. That's two gargoyles and an orc. I think I could do that. I don't have any orcs on the board, but I can get a gem to change a color. So I think, yeah, I think I will then spend, I have a four coin discount. So I'll go down to seven gold to grab this one. And then we'll replenish this with one that's great for the gargoyle because he's gonna score 15 points for that. Well, why the heck not? That does mean though, I'm most certainly going to spend one more gold to increase my influence to 20. So now it's the highest it can go. If I gain any influence, I'll gain two points instead. The gargoyle will move here. We'll simply move here, grabbing this null die and one of these gems. And then the gargoyle will score, and I believe it is 15 points for this one. Jeez, 15 points. And gets the bomb, the last guard, or the lost gardens. Gosh, I can't read. 15 points. So 52, 62 plus 5 is 67. Oh, right behind us. Our next action then, we'll move over to the shrine here, or not the shrine, the champion's uh, uh, lair. Grab this four, so we have a two cost discount on buying a champion. We're gonna grab this huntsman. Now this will cost us a total of six plus one, which is seven, minus two, which is five. We have six gold, so we'll go down to one gold. Uh, but now we'll score two points per the arrow uh, type of battle cards that we have. And we already have two with one prepped. So with that third one there, that should score six points at the end of the game. The gargoyle will then move here. We'll then move to this spot with the gold uh, layer, grabbing this four. So we'll gain two gold. That will move us up to three gold. Our gargoyle friend will move to the magic lair and now we'll replenish because there's only three dice. Thank goodness. Looking at our options now, I think we'll go to the gem lair again, grabbing one of our orc dice and grabbing another gem. That's our second one. And then the gargoyle will move here. And then I think we're going to complete a battle plan. We needed two gargoyles and one orc. We have all three here. I'm going to use this gem to flip this up to a five. So we've got five plus five is 10 plus four is 14. I want to at least get to 18. So at 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, using four magic, that should be enough to get to 18, which is 15 total points. I think then we'll unlock this spot. This now we can place a battle plan here. If we do, we can spend coins equal to the cost of any of the uh, champions. We don't have to worry about the ones that we have. We can just spend that cost and immediately gain them, which I think could be kind of awesome. We'll place this conquest marker here, which will gain us three magic and two gold, or three gold and two magic. One, two, three, so we're at six gold and three magic. What's a bummer is, I did not do a great job on this. My last battle plan, I can get this seven, but the game is done. So I will not be able to complete one of those award cards. I'll only be able to complete two of them. That's okay. This is still pretty good. The gargoyle will now move to here. And I think where I'm going to go is over to the magic layer, grabbing this skeleton for five. And we're going to place our conquest marker again. Oh, I almost got to score my victory points. <laughs> so I scored a total of 15 plus two is 17. 
We're at 68 right now. We'll go to 78. What they say is when you go around once to flip your marker over. And then we'll add 7 to that. So that puts us up to 85 or the 15. Because we're at the Magic Shrine, we can grab this marker off of our board. And now we'll have plus 1 to our battle strength every time we do a battle. That's going to be helpful for 1. I'm not even sure it's going to be that helpful. But <laughs> we'll grab that one. And we'll place it here, scoring 9 points. 9 plus our 15 puts us to 24. The Gargoyle will now get his 6th battle plan. That is the Bomb the Lost Gardens. That will get them 12 total points. They're at 67 to uh, 77, and then flip it over to 79. And then we'll refresh that with Swoop in the Malev's Temple. Now, my goal is to get that 7th battle objective, or battle plan card, completed before he can get his 7th one. Uh, just because that's more points that I am uh, foregoing for him to take. For my turn then, we'll move to the Champion's Lair, grabbing this Orc 4, which is giving me a 2 cost discount on a Champion. This Juggernaut here will score me 6 points. Seems like it's hard to say no to that. Now it normally costs 6 plus 2 because I already have 2 end game uh, Champions, but I have a 2 cost discount, so I'm going to use all my gold. I have 6 gold, I'm going to go down to 0. And I'm going to grab that one. That's going to score me six more points at the end of the game. I think that's going to help us quite a bit. The Gargoyle will then move to here. I then will move over here to the Tactics Lair, grabbing this one, which will give me a five cost discount. I'll grab this Tunnel End to Shalina. That costs four, but I don't have to pay anything. Replenishing it with this two cost barrage or two dice barrage. Eh. If I had any gold, I would definitely spend in some to increase my influence, which would just give me points, but I don't have any gold. <laughs> uh, the gargoyle will then slide over here. I'll then move myself up to here, grabbing this five uh, skeleton and another gem, and then the gargoyle will move to here. I'll discard this die and place this one here, and now I'm going to finish the game by completing this battle plan. Let's see if I can do this. I'm going to use this gem and turn this knoll into the gargoyle. I have an orc, I have another gargoyle, or I should say a skeleton, here, and I will use this one to flip this to a six. I then have three magic, one, two, three, which is totally useless otherwise, so I might as well move this up to a six for two, and this one to a six. So, And we have plus one to our strength because of our board, so I'm just going to knock this up to a six because I can. 6, 12, 18, 24. The most we can do is 20. At 20, that's 21 points. And we'll be able to place this out. Let's see if I can put this in a spot that gives us points. I can. Oh my goodness, this is kind of amazing. We're going to score 21 points. We're going to do this because it's a siege type. So that's 23 points. Then we get four more influence. Each influence right now is plus two victory points. So that's eight more victory points. Oh my gosh. So 21, 22, 23 plus eight is 31 victory points. Right? Right? Oh, that seems insane. I double checked my math. As we all know, my math is terrible on screen, uh, but I'm pretty sure that that's right. 31 points. So 24, 34, uh, 44, 54, uh, 55. <laughs> 31 points. That's insane. He gets one more turn because he's second player, but he doesn't get to where he can buy one. That's what I was trying to do is prevent him from buying one more. Okay. Game end scoring. He'll score five plus five is 10 plus seven. So that's 17 points for that. That will put him from the nine to a 19 plus seven more. That puts him to the 26. Yeah, he had no chance on me because then I'm going to score for all of these game end ones. That's six points. This one is two, four, six points. And this one is seven points. Wow. Yeah. Six plus six is 12 plus seven is 19. So basically 20 minus one, 55, 65, 75. I'll put it up like this, minus one. <laughs> that is by far the best score I've ever done. I'm hoping I did that right. But that was insane. I mean, getting four influence when you're all the way up at the top and each influence is two points, 
That is insane. There you have it. That was Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria. I would say that overall, I think this game is better competitive than Solo. I think Solo is light, enjoyable. You can beat the the AI pretty easily. <laughs> they say to play it on hard, start them at 30 instead of 10. If he had 20 more points, uh, yeah, definitely would have uh, killed him. <laughs> that game was insane. I think I was kind of set up pretty well. Never underestimate the value of these game end cards. You can get a lot of points that way, so don't underestimate that. As always, thank you so much for subscribing, liking, watching our channel, hanging out with us on our Discord. We've got tons of content. Hopefully you're enjoying it. Hopefully you're getting a game out on the table right now to play. And as always, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you at the next stop.